Hey everybody, this is Lupe Contreras, La Voz del Box. I want to make sure that you like and subscribe to G-Funky Boxing because if not, there's no way you can be el mas macho. Ah. Check it out. All right, G-Funky Boxing standing here with Lupe Contreras, man. Uh, good to see you here in Stockton, man. Good to be here. Good to be back. Yeah, we have a full night of uh, fights here uh, for tomorrow night, but I want to ask you, man, a lot of ring announcers don't get a lot of interviews, but how did you get into ring announcers? Man? Actually, I won a contest. Really? Uh, I won a contest about 24 years ago. Uh -huh. uh, top rank, along with when he was we're doing a contest called La Voz del Box, or The Voice of Boxing. I entered it. I thought it was going to be just, uh, you know, maybe they might give me a t-shirt and a videotape of my performance, but no. Turned into a career and uh, just kind of <laughs> went from there. Yes, man, and it's been really good. You're... Um, Michael Buffer has that phrase before his fight, the let's, not the let's get it on, but the let's get ready to rumble. Uh -huh. Where did you come up with yours? Well, part of that contest. They wanted something okay. They wanted something similar to let's get ready to rumble, but they wanted like a, a Spanish flavor to it. So I so said, what, what's, uh, you know, being Spanish all about, about being macho, right? So we're like, right. well, this is mas macho. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I had nothing else, so that's what I went with, and it stuck. No, yeah, it's really cool, man. It's really unique. And so is your, your tone of voice that you have. Um, so inspiration wise do you have any inspiration for your voice or anything like that or no, it's all not really it was it was one of those things that i was one of those guys that you know at 16 i sounded like a 30 year old woman <laughs> and at 17 sounded like a 40 year old man so it uh, it just kind of developed but obviously you know you got you you cannot be in uh a ring announcer without being influenced by you know michael buff or jimmy lennon yeah so you get a lot of influence from those guys you try to not necessarily emulate but take what they do and try to make it your own mm -hmm. and uh yeah those, those are pretty much my, my inspirations there okay so real quickly here let's get the quick cliff notes version of this okay because people look at at least from a fan's perspective they look at a ring announcer they probably don't think there's much to it but for me, being around a lot of these events, I know it's a lot of work, man. So just real briefly, kind of talk the fans through yeah. what you got to do to prepare preparation well, for the for shows. Well, for example, you know, obviously when you get here, you, we're doing the, the weigh-in right now. And you got to get all the information from the fighters. Um, my most important thing is the show is all about the fighters. So I want to make sure that they have the right, you know, they're, they're coming from the right city. We got the pronunciations correct. Mm -hmm. uh, as we talked about earlier, we're talking about, you know, Nonito. Nonito, Nonito yes. Donaire, with, he wanted Donaitis, so we went Donaitis. Yeah. So, yeah, you go uh, find out a bit about the fighters, find out maybe if they were, you know, national amateur champion, maybe they were an Olympian. So just put together all that information that you can. Um, and really the rest of it is just kind of getting into the mood of the fight. You know, when you're there, I always compare it to... Uh, as a fighter, you're, when you're doing the intro, it's like when you go to the movie theaters and there's a movie trailer, right? Yeah. The movie trailer comes on. There's no such thing as a bad movie trailer. Every time you see one, there might be a bad movie. Right. But the movie trailer always looks great. Yes. So I look at it that way. My <laughs> intros are the movie trailer. Once I get out, it's up to the fighters to put on a great movie or put on a great fight. Absolutely. So, you know, you're, you're there to set the tone, uh, create a nice environment, get the crowd into it. You're part, you're part salesman, you're part carnival barker, you're part... You know, just uh, <laughs> hype man. So that's yes, what, that's, that's what's involved. Exactly, you got to have that enthusiasm. Sure, right? of it, it's it's contagious. You it, know? Yeah, that's what you hope it is. Yeah. That's yeah. What you hope it is. So this is your third time coming here to Stockton and do a show with uh, G Squad, right? Or second? third time with G Squad, oh. but I think I've been here previously twice when I was with Top Rank when the, when uh, and so Gabe was with Top Rank as well. Yes, yes, so, yes. Okay. So I've been here quite a few times. Yeah. So um, you like coming out here? The crowds are always yeah, live. Yeah, it's huh? always great, man. This is one of the few places where people show up early. Yes. <laughs> you, you've got so many uh, local guys or guys from the region mm -hmm. that, I mean, when I get there, usually it's empty. But, but when, when you come here to this arena, the crowd's already lined up. They're yeah. already lined up around the block. And it's, and it's a testament to what G-Squad's doing. You know, they're making it more than just boxing matches. I mean, tomorrow night they're going to have uh, stilt walkers, uh, people in costumes, fire yes, breathers, yes. all sorts of things. So I like the way they're making it fully immersive for the fans. And, uh, you know, even if you don't have some great fights, you'll, have, you'll still have a great time with everything else that's going on around. Absolutely. And, again, with you being a part of it, man, it makes it that much better, man. So and I got me. my, my uh, Halloween tuxedo, too, as well. So I'll oh, check that out I look forward night. to that tomorrow, yeah, man. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, thanks a lot for your time, Lupe. Appreciate it, man. Right, have man, a good show tomorrow. Likewise.